how do we create those relationships? How do we come to somebody in a friendship? Do we open our heart? Do we run because we're frightened and we don't quite know what to expect? I know for me early on, I didn't really have a clue how to create relationships. My family life, and, and I suspect for some of you perhaps was similar, it was not quite what I would call an ideal modeling for relationships. It was extremely dysfunctional, and I know my parents did the best they could. I had, uh, had an older brother, actually, and I'm grateful to say that we were estranged for 20 years. And when I moved back to Georgia about 20 years ago, we were able to begin to rekindle, I wouldn't say rekindle, um, to begin anew, because that's basically what it was. And that's what I invite you to do wherever you are in any relationship that might be a little challenge right now is to say, what is it that I want in my life? What is it that I want to experience and create every day? And what am I willing to do? Because I know my family history was not the greatest in terms of the skills and the tools. I didn't come with an instruction manual. How many of you did in how to create a relationship? <laughs> Isn't it interesting? From our earliest time in school, that is not something that we're taught. It's almost like, well, here you go, and you're just supposed to know how to do it. And if you don't have those models, if you don't have those examples of healthy, happy, hearty, heart-based relationships, what do we do? I'm sure if we Google books on relationships right now and shows on relationships, what will we find? Ones that are what? Endless. And somebody's always writing a new book. Somebody's always saying, hey, this is what you need to do. And everybody has their own formula, their own idea. And yes, we could talk about trust, honesty, respect, patience, gratitude, vulnerability. We could, the list is endless of all the different things, the ingredients that are necessary to create what I consider, and perhaps you do too, a relationship that is truly enriching your life. One that is rewarding, fulfilling, on every level. I remember we were living in Japan. My dad was in the military, and that was another part of, we moved a lot. So part of what I learned early on was, if I create a friendship, guess what? You're going to go away. I'm going to leave. Something's going to happen. And so that was something that was really instilled and ingrained in me. And like I said earlier, even in my family relationship, arguing, screaming, yelling, that was how I learned to communicate. A kind word or a hug or a touch or affection was not something that I was that familiar with. So it was, you know what, incumbent upon me. It was up to me as my life journey continued to reach out, even as scared as I was, to take that step and say, okay, with my knees knocking and my heart racing, I don't quite know how to do this. And to be vulnerable, to be open. Relationships, they're an interesting thing, wouldn't you say? And there's so many different kinds. That's the beauty of it. It's that heart-to-heart -heart connection. What I started to say that we were living in Japan and we moved back to the United States. This was in the mid-60s. And I spent the first seven, well, I was five, I should say, when we went overseas. For the next seven years, really, my upbringing was on a military base in the Philippines and in Japan. So for the first half of my school life, it was in those types of schools, which was wonderful because it was tons of diversity and really wonderful ways to look at things. So we came back, we didn't watch a lot of TV because everything in Japan was in Japanese except for Monday nights, I think Gunsmoke. <laughs> you know, can you imagine? Because even Ricky and Lucy were like, yo Ricky, all the Japanese, I speak in Japanese, and you don't really get it. But anyway, you get the point. So the things that I was exposed to were a bit different. I know a lot of my friends about my age that will mention a TV show or a program like going, what are you talking about? I was watching sumo wrestling. <laughs> or the Kabuki Theater. But we came back to the United States and we were living at Edwards Air Force Base in California. And really for the first time was my first memory of American TV. I was like, wow, people speak English. 
What a concept. <laughs> and most of all, the wonderful model of relationships. Soap operas. <laughs> I'll never forget sitting there with my mom because she was really drawn to that. Remember now, some of you may recall this from my other talk, that my mom was born in China. She was Russian, actually, and that's a whole other story. But just know her orientation was not this American culture. So soap operas, they just drew her right in, right? What was it? Like sands through the hourglass. <laughs> so were the days of our lives. Wasn't it something like that? And I was like, wow, here I was for 12. 11, <coughs> eight, eight, turned 12. So what were the models that you grew up with? Perhaps you had a great family experience with positive role models and there was a lot of laughter and joy rather than yelling and screaming. Perhaps you didn't grow up with alcohol as one of your main ingredients in your environment. Whatever it was for you, the bottom line is, to me what's so important is where are you today? Where are you today with whatever it was you grew up with? We're still going to have the soap operas. In fact, was it in the 80s then? Dallas, Dyn uh, Dallas Dynasty, Falcon Crest, I think those appeared on the scene. And so we had daytime, I mean evening time soap operas. So once again, we have the TV media. Where are your healthy role models right now in your life? What are the friendships and the connections within your family, your personal friends? your spouse, your partner, your beloved. What are those near and dear connections that you have right now? What are those composed of? Don Miguel Ruiz, let everything we do and say be an expression of the beauty in our heart, always, <coughs> always based in love. So how do we create those relationships? It helps if you put on your glasses because then you're able to see a little more clearly. Silence. Isn't that wonderful? We spend so much time talking that we don't really listen. The art of listening compassionately, lovingly, without judgment, that's a very powerful tool to craft to create the most amazing relationships in your life. Thich Nhat Hanh, one of his quotes, goes something like this in terms of when you come to another person in that relationship, to be so present. My dear, I am here for you. I am fully present with you. And in this space that we share, we have this powerful heart connection. We sing it here every Sunday. Namaste. The God in me beholds the God in you. Namaste. How do you approach the people in your life? How do you speak? How do you show up? Remember what I said when I first started? That relationship with you is so important. If I'm not okay with me and I'm engaging with you, I've got all this other stuff going on. There's a good chance I'm going to project a lot of my stuff onto you and immediately that's going to have my energy go in a different direction that I cannot be fully present with you. Where's your heart right now that was handed out? Are you still holding it? Breathe into that heart right now. Just breathe into it. Become very aware of it. Of all the things that I found when I was doing some research for this talk, as I mentioned earlier, there was workshops and seminars 
and all kinds of classes and books and everything out there of different ways, different things, different ingredients that are important in these relationships that we hold near and dear to our hearts. But for me, and perhaps for you, the one I really wanted to focus on today was that heart-to-heart -heart communication, that heart-to-heart -heart connection. Communication, communication, communication. That's like location, location, location. To me, we all have a different language. Gary Chapman has a book, if you're not familiar with it, called The Five Languages of Love. And in that book, he articulates very much those differences that we have. There are many books out there about this, but his is one of the most well-known. And if I'm somebody who sees your expression of love for me as perhaps something that's, well, that's nice, but that's okay, that doesn't really mean that to me, and you keep doing what you're doing because that's your idea of expressing love to me, chances are we're going to have a disconnect in there. And it's going to go both ways. I know my parents, and I do remember my mom later on <coughs> down the road telling me this. She would say, your father is always doing, doing, doing. And I said, well, that could be a good thing. If once in a while he would just speak a kind word to me, if he would reach out and touch me, and just hold my hand. That would mean the world to me, rather than all the things that he's doing to show his love. So what does that offer us? It really opens a door to what I said a minute ago, finding a language in which we can communicate with each other. One that we don't need an interpreter for. And to me, that place is in the heart. That place is love. And yes, we certainly need to be able to hone that skill of saying, okay, my dear, I am here for you. What is it that you need? Am I willing to ask the question? Am I willing to open my heart and say, what is it that you need? Or am I afraid they're going to ask something of me? And number one, what? I don't want to do it. I think it, you know, maybe it's kind of crazy. Or it, what, doesn't make sense to me. That's my agenda. If this relationship is important to me, I don't care if it's with your kids, if it's with your spouses, if it's with your best friends. Like I said earlier, it really doesn't matter. It can be in a work relationship. What is it that you need from me? How can we make this better? How can we enrich this experience? So that not only are we on the same page, but we're in the same book in our communication with each other. Understanding where we are coming from. Understanding that our backgrounds, that our history is different. Where is that place, that space, that we meet in the middle? So we can lay down our stories. We can lay down our stuff and simply be. And I'm not saying that it's always such an easy thing to do. But are you open and willing to do that? Are you desiring of a deeper connection with someone, with yourself? 50% of all marriages end in divorce. Isn't that amazing? How much dialogue do you think goes on before two people commit to a relationship? How much dialogue goes on after they commit to the relationship? I know I was in a 22-year relationship that I entered into in my late 20s. And when that relationship ended, in actuality, some of you I've shared this with you, that after the first couple of years, really, that relationship was over. But I had learned, you stay with it. That was the modeling that I had from my parents. 
And that's not a criticism. It's just what I learned. Loyal to a fault, I'll do everything I can to make this work. So I did everything I could do to make it work. And I imagine she did too, but we weren't on the same page in the same book. To be able to have those honest heart-to-heart -heart conversations and say, you know, this isn't working. Can we make it better? Honesty, openness, so that we can say, you know what, I want the best for you. I want your heart to be full of joy and love and laughter every single moment. And I want the same for me. We're not taught these things. But right now, I'm sharing this with you. Because I know you know that. Somewhere deep inside of you, I know you know that. That is your true essence. Stephen Covey, I love this quote, the most important ingredient we put into any relationship is not what we say or do, but what we are. What we are. So what are you? Are you this physical body with a mind and a heart that beats? and a body that moves around, and a mouth that loves to eat, and speak, and play, and have fun. Is that all that you are? Sometimes I kind of thought that was pretty much it for me. I really didn't have a connection. I was very disconnected. So being in a relationship with me, much less being in another relationship, was like foreign territory. I had no roadmap. And that was before GPS, so I was really, really in a lot of trouble. The Sufis say, mind speaks to mind, heart speaks to heart, and soul speaks to soul. This means that where you are coming from inside determines what level you are able to reach and touch in another. If you communicate from your mind, you will reach the mind of your partner, your person. Mind-level communication is the most common mode in our culture and generally leads to differences of personality, attitude, and opinion. Not to love and harmony, which is what we all are yearning for in our beloved relationships. Generally, in this type of relationship, both people feel misunderstood, unappreciated, and unfulfilled. Each one's needs and desires remain unheard and unsatisfied. What do you see? Who do you see when you look at those special people in your life? I love the word intimacy to where we can be so connected in the different levels and the different types of relationships that we have. In to me see. Intimacy. Am I willing to allow you to see and know the truth of me? If I don't trust myself, how can I trust you? Where do I learn these things? I learn to go into my heart. I say to myself, I'm willing to take the step and the next step. Because this is what I want to create in my life. Because when we are in relationship, because what? We're always in relationship, no matter what. But when we are in a relationship that is of the most high, and it's such a vibration that just lifts us in un unbelievable ways, and our physical body is just oh, fantastic, and we're vital and vibrant and having a great time, what happens in the relationship of the one? What happens in the relationship of the whole? Everybody on this planet, everything is uplifted by you saying, I am willing to commit to me. I am willing to commit to you, each and every one of you, on some level. And in the relationships that are near and dear to me in my life right now, I am willing to open my heart. Perhaps it's time I learn about forgiveness. Perhaps it's time I learn 
to let the resentments go. Perhaps it's time I write a new story. Heart-level communication leads to deep understanding, compassion, and eventually unconditional love. It is the beginning stage of moving beyond the needs and desires of the ego and personality. It is the world of true giving. And I love this next piece. Where the other's welfare matters more than your own. Where you want for another at least what you want for yourself. That was a reading that Maria gave. It feels great to be loved unconditionally, doesn't it? Or perhaps you've never experienced that. But boy, oh boy, does it feel good when we can offer that to another. And love them up just as they are. I'm going to offer you two steps. It's like the dance. Two step. Okay? Because life is a dance, right? So two basic steps that come from this heart level communication that I want to offer to you. The first in developing heart to heart communication is to establish an authentic connection with the divine. With the divine. That's what I alluded to a moment ago. This is a place to begin within with the divine in your heart. While making that divine connection, your heart flows out to your partner, to your person, and holds him, her, in love and acceptance, regardless of the state of emotion they might be in at that moment, no matter what is going on. Even if it's anger, even if it's frustration, it's that connection with the, the divine. The second step, which of course it builds on the first, is developing the ability to understand what your partner is feeling and seeing behind the words that are spoken. Oftentimes, it's not the words that we say. It's what we are afraid to say. It is that unspoken part of us sometimes that wants to come out. And we hold it in. Imagine what it would feel like to be able to say whatever was on your, not just your mind, but in your heart. And to lay it out there and know that you are not going to be judged. You are not going to be criticized. You are accepted and loved right then and there in that moment. That's the divine. That's God. That's spirit. That's this amazing, powerful intelligence that loves you as you are, no matter what, because you are that expression. Look at that heart and remember, that is your nature. That is your essence. Learn to read the messages of the deeper heart. Become a better listener. Be willing to say, I need to shut off my stuff that's going on here. Be fully present. There are lots of workshops on actual in-person communication to where I am going to listen, I'm going to give you eye contact, I'm going to be present with you, and all of those things. I'm not going to be over here on my phone doing this, watching TV, uh-huh, uh-huh, would you? Yeah, I know, I know what you mean. All the different ways, habits that we've taken on, that we are not fully present. Mindfulness. A lot of you know I'm a, a big one about that. Mindfulness, being present moment by moment by moment so that I can notice things. Perhaps I notice your body language. Perhaps I can sense the energy that's coming from you when you're saying what you are to me and give you an open space to share because you matter, because our relationship matters and it's important to me. <clears throat> This is where the honor and respect come in in a relationship. I value this person in my life, and I am going to give them my full, undivided attention. And you know what? If I can't in that moment, because we do have stuff to do. Life happens. Stuff's going on. To say, you know what? I really want to hear what it is you have to say. I really want to be fully present with you, because you matter to me. We matter to me. So. Let me set aside some time. Why don't we make an agreement?
Because what we're communicating right now, right? Why don't we make an agreement to spend that quality time together? And to share. And to just be. Wouldn't that be awesome? Rather than the busyness that often gets in the way. For those of you who've had kids, I never had kids, but I, I think about little ones. It's like, mommy, mommy, daddy, daddy. Wanting them to be right there and present. To be fully engaged. Isn't that exciting to think you could do that? Do you believe you can? Or have you fallen into those habits? And it's okay if you have. It's all about awareness. It's all about you coming back to you and saying, what is it that I want in my life? That heart-to-heart -heart divine connection. To know that in conversation, in communication, that my heart is wide open. And in that place, I will meet you there. It's a space in relationships to where we can enter into because we have co-created it together. We can lay down, like I said earlier, all the stuff outside and say, okay, are you in it with me? Are you willing to take my hand? And we can engage in this beautiful, beautiful space of love, joy, gratitude. Sometimes when we bump up against things in a relationship, it's easy to focus on what's not okay about that person or what's not okay about it. Are we willing to say, you know what? I am going to sit here and intentionally look at, write down everything that I love about this person, the qualities, and that's where I'm going to put my energy and my focus. You try that a few times, and I promise you, that relationship will change. And it may not be because that person changes at all, but it will be that you have become different. You have entered into that heart-to-heart -heart connection, and you are opening a space. Because relationships, to me, are not always 50-50. And if you believe they are, I really invite you to look at it differently. Because there is no way, in my mind, and in my heart, that we can be walking around the scale all the time. Okay, let me measure. 50 50. Okay, we're good. No. It's a wax and a wane. It's a flow. And sometimes I'm in that space to where, you know what? I'm going to carry you. What's that song back in the 60s? He ain't heavy. He's my brother. Whew, I just got God bumps. Let me carry you. Because I know when I need you, you will carry me. And together, we can do this. We can create the most amazing relationship in our oneness, in our heart. It's our human nature to want to be seen, heard, valued, understood. It's so important to keep these precious relationships. They're like gems, treasures in our life. To keep them fed and thriving and to maintain that loving heart space. As I get ready to close, I just want to offer some things just to, to sit with you for a moment. And continue, please, to keep your heart in your hand. Learning to communicate heart to heart does not happen overnight. This communication style involves deepening your heart and developing your insight. It requires putting on a new lens. The key is letting whatever you perceive be influenced and affected by the divine. Take off the lenses that you have been wearing. Maybe you have several pairs and you go, okay, today, I can see through divine eyes. But maybe I need to get a cloth and clean my lenses. Maybe I need to put on lenses of love that allow me to see and know something different. Maybe it's time that I put on the lenses of love. The lenses that allow me to see you. <laughs> Laughter. That allow us to laugh together. In our silliness. In our humanness. 
God has a sense of humor. I certainly know the universe does. Are you kidding me? I'm sure we'd all agree on that one. So put on the lenses of love. Your world will change. And wear pink. <laughs> it's springtime. Love. What's that? Love is in the air. <laughs> Things are blooming. Have you noticed them? What is blooming within you? What are you planting within you? What are you cultivating within that soil of substance in your heart space? Pay attention to what you're planting in there. Pay attention to what you and the people in your life are creating. Grow a garden this spring. But make sure you tend to it. You pay attention to it. And you can enjoy the bounty together because it's a blessing. It's truly a blessing. This level of communication, heart to heart, will transform your life. And it'll bring you into a world of such richness and joy that you've never known. Intimacy, into me see. I'm willing to meet you in that space. I am open. My heart is open. And together we will connect heart to heart, soul to soul.